The ocean is a place of mystery and wonder. Only in the past few decades have we been able to see for ourselves what's really going on beneath the waves. But as the oceans reveal their secrets and beauty, it's also becoming increasingly clear that they are in real danger. Threats like overfishing, pollution, climate change, and habitat destruction have all taken their toll on the ocean's health. More and more people are convinced that we need to set aside protected areas to give our oceans a chance to recover. Marine reserves are places in which all harmful uses such as fishing, mining, dumping and oil drilling are banned. They do not just protect certain species or special habitats. Marine reserves are based on preserving the ocean ecosystem as a whole. Marine reserves are uh, an entire ecosystem uh, protection. What we're trying to do with them is to create the conditions for recovery from past impacts and harm done by people. They protect the full spectrum of wildlife in them from the smallest microbe to the largest uh, marine mammals and fish. In a way, marine reserves are as old as fishing itself. The ocean seemed a limitless resource only because our catches were replenished from areas that we couldn't reach. But now that technological limitations no longer exist, we must set aside protected areas if our use of the oceans is to be sustainable. On land, protected areas are a well-established concept. But less than 1% of the ocean enjoys similar protection. Most existing reserves are restricted to coastal areas and are not fully protected or well enforced. But scientific support for marine reserves is increasing and results from numerous studies in both temperate and tropical waters are remarkably consistent. You see a rapid increase in populations of exploited species within reserves. Uh, you also see an increase in the number of species in those protected areas over time. And you also see uh, a very dramatic increase in the body size of the animals in protected areas. But the rate at which marine reserves will yield such positive results depends on many factors. For centuries, George's Bank on the east coast of the United States has been fished for scallop and cod. But in 1994, in an attempt to save crashing populations, fishing with bottom gear was banned in these waters. Some creatures, like scallops, responded quickly to the protection. That's because they grow fast and reproduce early in their lives. When scientists and fishermen surveyed the bank four years later, they were astonished by the changes they saw. It, w it was incredible so that when we went in to, to uh, survey these areas after four years, we found more larger scallops than had been seen probably in anybody's living memory. While scallops rebounded relatively quickly, other species, like cod, required more time. That's because cod live longer and take longer to mature. Today, cod are only just beginning to show signs of recovery. This case study shows how different species respond to protection at different rates. Some take a few years to rebound, others take decades. Marine reserves clearly benefit the species living within them. But can areas beyond their boundaries also profit from them? Inside marine reserves, fish and other animals are allowed to live longer and grow bigger. And for many marine species, size truly matters. 
When a female fish grows twice as large, she spawns eight times as many eggs. And if allowed to grow four times as big, her egg production increases 64 times. In addition, the eggs of older females are of higher quality and have better chances of survival. A healthy fish population is shaped like a pyramid. Sustainable fishing should only target the middle group and leave the young, as well as the breeding stock of older females, intact. But our current way of fishing rarely allows fish and other animals to achieve their full breeding potential. Using powerful but indiscriminate technology, we scoop up all marine life. A vast proportion of the catch, mostly young or unwanted species, is thrown back dead or dying. A waste for both the ecosystem and the fishermen's future. Fishing is hunting, and at sea we are pursuing wildlife. In order to sustain the take of marine wildlife, we're going to need to place large areas off limits to exploitation. Only by doing that can we ensure the long-term sustainability of fisheries. By putting certain areas off limits to fishing, animals are allowed to grow big again. Some of their offspring will drift beyond the boundaries of the reserve, and as the protected area itself becomes crowded, some animals may migrate into new territory. Because of this so-called spillover effect, marine reserves can restock populations elsewhere. On the island of El Hierro, part of the Canary Isles in Spain, fishermen are reaping the benefits of a marine reserve they themselves helped to establish. Antes de la reserva, en la zona que ella prácticamente se quedó sin pesca ninguna, porque aparte llevamos trasmayo, llevamos nasa de, de pescado y vamos, eh, eh, prácticamente se acabó con todo. Y después de la nasa, que hace ya más o menos 15 años. These results have inspired the fishermen here to increase the marine reserve areas around the coastline of their island. But reserves are more than a fisheries management tool. They also allow the ecosystem to return to its natural state. At the Lee Reserve in New Zealand, an area originally intended for scientific study has enjoyed protection for several decades. And during that time, it has seen a most remarkable transition. Scientists had always considered this to be the natural state of most of New Zealand's coastline, barren rocks grazed by sea urchins. But after the Lee Reserve had been established, the area started to change dramatically. The biggest change underwater was the disappearance of the sea urchin grazed paddock area, which had been 30% of all the underwater reef areas. But as the crayfish and rock lobster and, and snapper that got bigger and bigger, they were big enough to eat all of them. So the paddock vanished. It went back to kelp forest and other large seaweeds. In other reserves around New Zealand, the most profound changes occurred only when sport fishing was also banned and areas became fully protected. I think what all this proves is that our expectations are based largely on ignorance. We, we don't know much. And so the best reason for marine reserves is that it will tell us much better what the real thing is like. We allow it to do its own thing and then we can find out what that is. Ocean ecosystems are all interconnected and fish and other animals don't care about man-made boundaries. During their lives, they may move between places thousands of kilometers apart. 
In order to protect the full spectrum of marine life, large-scale reserves are needed, not only along coasts, but also in the open ocean. In the future, we need to think much bigger. We need to create networks of protected areas that will circle the entire planet. Only by doing this can we ensure that the ecological processes that support life in the sea and support our uses of that life can continue. Marine reserves should be set up where they are most effective, such as at breeding sites, nursery grounds, and migration corridors. Some particularly sensitive areas should be universally protected. Such places include fragile sea mounts and other deep sea ecosystems. And a global reserve network should perhaps also include the most isolated and vulnerable place on Earth, Antarctica. Marine reserves will benefit the ocean's health as well as our uses of the sea. They may be off limits to exploitation, but people can visit and study these places, increasing our understanding of the marine world. But marine reserves cannot stand on their own. Outside protected areas, we must switch to sustainable fishing practices. And in order to tackle climate change and pollution in the sea, we will have to reform our lives on land. Only then will we give ourselves a true chance to restore the oceans. <laughs>